Hi, welcome to the ninth video of a drop of Excel. Today we are going to learn about conditions, how to work with different conditions. If you have directly come to this video, please go ahead and look at the introduction first and then the eight videos and then come back here to learn further. So we are going to start with something called as if function and then we will move to conditional formatting. So what does if function mean? right? So what is the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear the word if? Can you think of something? What comes to your mind when you hear the word if? A condition comes to your mind, right? The first thing that comes to your mind is a condition. Now, the condition can either be true or either be false, right? So if I look at an object and I say, this is a watch, that statement, that condition can either be true or either be false. So if that condition is true, whatever is written here should get executed okay so if that is a watch i need to put a statement against it that if this is a watch then do this else do this make sense so if the condition is true do something if it is false do something so this is how the syntax of if condition works so first you have to give a condition then a value of true and then a value of false. Now, when you will learn more in detail, right? Today we will focus on one condition only, but I'm just trying to tell you that whenever you focus on more conditions, this can be conditions as well. So all your conditions will come in this condition block itself, right? Today we will focus on one condition because that should be good enough for you to start working with a function. So that was the syntax that we just saw. Now we will try to first learn based on some sample examples and then we will actually apply it in the data. So I'm saying if tab, it is saying logical test. Logical test means the condition. So what we are trying to say is if this cell C6 is equal to ABC. Now when you're typing text inside a formula, you cannot type it directly because Excel will think it's a function. So you have to put it in double quotes, shift double quotes, right? Whatever text you want to put. So we say if C6 is equal to ABC, comma, value of true, I want correct as the output, otherwise incorrect as the output. So that I put in value of false. I close the bracket and I press enter. Now what I get is ABC is correct. If I put something else here, I get incorrect because now this is what came in the output. If I put ABC again, I'll get correct. If I put ABC space, I will get incorrect. So even if it looks like correct, sometimes because of the space, it may be incorrect. So if I remove the space, it becomes correct. One more time, equal to if, tab if the cell is equal to in double quotes x y z so you can give in capital it does not matter i want the number one in the output or zero now why have i not put double quotes because in numbers you don't need to put double quotes you should not put double quotes when you are putting text you have to put a double quote for a number you do not put a double quote so I get one because this is X, Y, Z. If I change this to something else, I get zero. If I put one again, I get one. Clear enough? Moving on. Now I have a number 100. My condition is if this number is equal to 100, then you give me one as the output, otherwise two as the output. So is this number 100? If it is, give me 1 as the output, otherwise give me 2. So it gave me 1. If I change this to 101, it will give me 2. Or for that matter, any other number, it will give me 2. Only 100, it will give me 1. Next. If the number is greater than 50, then say by otherwise sell okay so because this number is greater than 50 we will buy it otherwise we will sell it so the moment it becomes 40 rupees 
we will sell it or forty dollars we will sell it if it is 50 it will still say sell why because it is greater than 50 so the same thing if i put if the number is greater than equal to 50 then buy otherwise sell so what happens is in this case in 50 i'm getting a sell because it says greater than 50 but in this case i'm getting a buy because it says greater than or equal to so the number either is 50 or more than 50 it will say buy or unless it will say sell so if i put 40 here both will be sell if i put 51 here both will be buy but 50 this will be sell and this will be buy i hope you understood similarly you can try out for less than and less than and equal to right now what this symbol means not equal to so i'm going to say if this number is not equal to 50 then let's say abc otherwise show me xyz so is this number 50 yes it is so it will show me the reverse thing it will show me xyz if it is not 50 it will show me abc because it is 50 it will show me xyz if i put any other number it will show me abc so this is how not equal to works interesting the last thing blank so i'm going to just highlight this cell so you understand that i'm looking towards this cell if this cell is equal to blank now how do i give blank i'll just say double quote double quote if it is blank show one otherwise show 100 so if it is blank show me a number one otherwise show me a number 100 so this is showing me one if i put a number here or anything else it will show me 100 this is a date format that's why it's coming like this if i put something else it will still show me 100 the moment i delete this this becomes one so this is how blank works i'll show you one more example now we are going to work with a date so we're going to say if today remember this is greater than this date then show me raise invoice else leave it blank so don't show me anything if it is not greater than today that's how also you can use a blank so because my today's date i'm recording this on 2nd of april so if today's date is greater than 26 march which in this case it is it will show me raise invoice otherwise it will show me blank so if i make this 4th april it will become blank because today's date is not greater than this date interesting please go ahead try all of these before you jump on to the using this in the actual data right you this should be very very clear in your mind all these different different syntaxes how it works with text with numbers with dates all of that should be very very clear only then move on to the data and solve the examples there moving on for whoever is completed please continue now shipping based on country so how do you use this if condition in actual scenario now so we are going to say that on this sell price there will be a shipping value based on where you're going to ship this right if it's going to be shipped within india there'll be a particular shipping if it is going to be shipped to usa there'll be a particular shipping so if the country is equal to usa then the shipping will be the sell price multiplied by five percent so that's the shipping cost in usa else if it is not in usa see now in our case there are only two countries usa and india so if it is not in usa obviously it's in india if it's in india then you put a thousand rupees so we are working with inr right now if you're working with dollars you try to put a dollar rate right we are trying to put a rupees thousand rupees flat within india that's what we are saying for any product so now because this was usa it calculated five percent of three thousand eight hundred 
But if I double click, this is again USA, this is again USA. But because this is India, it gave a flat thousand rupees. This was again USA, this was India. Interesting. So this is how you can use an if condition and get your shipping cost based on country. What I've seen people doing and what you might also be doing until now is you might be filtering this data first or sorting this data, putting the formula for 5% only for USA sales, then again for India only putting 1000 and then again doing the sorting again. All that is not required. One simple formula did the job. All right. Now what the sell price means, the incentive we are saying if the sell price is greater than 5000, then you want to give an incentive. How much incentive? 2% of the sell value. All right. If it is greater than 5000 or else zero, you don't want to give any incentive for less than 5000. Now this is zero because this is less than 5000. As soon as you double click, wherever the value is greater than 5000, you see an incentive coming up there automatically. So this is how you can calculate commission, incentive, lot of different things. Right? Now we are going to look at discount. So here I'm going to teach you one more function within this, uh, this if function. All right. So I'm going to say if. Now it says discount in festival period. So what I want to see is if the date is falling in the month of November or whatever festival period you want to think of. I'm thinking of November as my festival period, right? So, but I do not want to put a date. I want to only put the month condition. So I'm going to say if the month tab of this date, close the bracket is equal to 11, 11 means November, month of the date is equal to November, then we will give a 5% discount. Otherwise, we will not give any percent discount. So now when I double click this down, anywhere where the month is November, so if I just scroll down, you see this, all these values are in November. Why is it coming as 0 0.05? Because it is number format. If I just select the column control space and make it percentage, it will give me percentage. Now this is all November. That's why it's showing me 5% only in November. So this is how you can use the if condition in your actual data. So we learned the if condition with one condition. If you want to use if with multiple conditions, you have to research on and function or function and if under if nested if function. All right. Conditional formatting. Now, what does conditional formatting typically mean by the word of it? Right. So what you're intending to do is you're trying to format something based on a condition. Now, what does format mean? Either color, typically it will be color, right? So conditional formatting. We will apply again on numbers or text on dates, right? We'll again learn on all three quickly. So I'm going to first select my entire bill value column, right? And I'm going to say home tab, conditional formatting, highlight cell rules. If this number is greater than, so it automatically brings out an average number, but I'm going to put a number of, let's say, 200,000. If this number is greater than 200,000, give me a green fill or a yellow fill, right? So now whatever number is greater than 200,000, when you scroll down, you will keep seeing any numbers greater than 200,000, you're going to get that yellow fill. Very few numbers seem to be greater than 200,000. Sorry about that. Yeah, here. See, all of these numbers are going into yellow. On that itself, if you apply one more, let's say less than 1000 in red. So whatever is less than 1000, you get in red. So you saw that one value. Similarly, if there is any other value less than 1000, you will get it as red. Now this works dynamically. I'm just changing this value right now so that I explain you better. If I just change this to 100, it will become red dynamically there itself. If I make it to 400,000, there itself it will become yellow. So you don't have to apply the condition again. 
Once you apply it, it sees the value and it applies the conditional format. Interesting. Now, whenever you want to see what all conditions were applied on this particular range, you go here, you go to manage rules and that's where you see your conditions. Easy enough. You can delete your conditions from here, do whatever you want. Condition formatting, manage rules. All right. Now, this was about highlight cell rules. So we saw these two. Similarly, you have between and equal to. Now we'll look at text contains. So I'm going to select this entire column city and I'm going to say text contains Mumbai. And I take the green color and I say, okay. Now when I scroll down, wherever I will see Mumbai, I will see that highlighted in green automatically. So that's how you can use the text that contains on text. For dates, I can say date occurring yesterday, today, tomorrow. All these options, the way we saw in filter are available here as well. So if I just put this month, okay, and I press OK. Now, right now, I don't have a date of this month. So I'm just going to put today's date. Let's say I put 4th April and I say enter. I will get that formatting automatically because I chose this month and I chose that red formatting. So any date that I put in this month, I'll get that formatting automatically. So this was about date occurring. Now, similarly, the top bottom rules, you can easily learn it yourself. You just have to follow what we learned in terms of logic. And that's how you do it. The last thing that we are going to see in this is data bars. So I've selected the bill value. All right. I'm going to do go ahead and clear the rules from these cells. OK, so I don't want to see what conditional formatting I did before this. So I'm just saying clear rules. This is how you can clear the rules. Now I'm going to apply a data bar. These are only color options. So whatever you choose, it is fine. Logically, it is the same thing. I'm going to choose this orange color, the red data bar. Sorry, not the orange, the red data bar. So I'm going to click this and what comes up is whatever value is highest will get a full bar. And then whatever value is lowest will get a zero bar, almost a zero bar, right? And all the values in between will get some or the other value. To prove this, I'll just change this particular value and add some zeros. And suddenly you see everything else has become zero compared to this because a large number. If I remove some zeros, it has reduced. If I remove one more zero, it has reduced. If I reduce one more zero, it does not reduce because this is now a common number between them. Right? So this is a data bar. So visually itself, you understand that whatever my value of this order is, it is very, very minimal compared to the highest order value. So if I scroll down, so if I scroll down, I see a particular value, let's say, yeah, suddenly suppose if I see a 4,86,900. So it seems that, okay, I'm little more than halfway through to the highest order value. So this is about conditional formatting. You can use this for a lot of things. Please, whatever questions you have in this video, leave it as comments in the section below. If you have anything that you like, something that you learned new, anything that you want to comment or ask, please leave it in the comment section below. And yes, please like, share and subscribe the video. Looking forward to see you in the next three videos as well. Thank you so much.